signs that God is trying to get your attention. Welcome to Sacred Revelations. Hello dear viewers and welcome back to Sacred Revelations. If you're new here this is your place for deep biblical insights, spiritual guidance, and empowering revelations that connect you to God's divine plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like and share this message with your friends and family. Let's spread the light of God together. Also we'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below and let us know how God has been speaking to you recently. Today we dive deep into an incredibly important topic. Signs that God is trying to get your attention. Have you ever wondered why certain events seem to align or why a particular scripture keeps resurfacing? Maybe you've faced repeated challenges or received unexpected moments of clarity. All these might be God's way of speaking directly to your heart. Let's explore the profound ways God communicates with us and how we can tune our spirits to His voice. This will be a journey of over 9,000 words, filled with divine truths, practical examples and scriptural references to help you understand when God is reaching out to you. The Voice of God Through Scripture The first and most profound way God speaks to us is through His Word, the Bible. The Bible isn't just a book, it's a living, breathing testament of God's love, power and wisdom. Hebrews 4 verse 12 reminds us, for the Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Have you ever opened the Bible and felt as though the words on the page were written just for you? That is no coincidence. God's Word is meant to convict, guide, and comfort. It cuts through our doubts, fears and confusion, illuminating the path He wants us to follow. For example, when you're struggling with anxiety, Verses like Philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 remind you to cast your cares on Him. When you're facing temptation, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 assures you that God provides a way out. Every verse that stirs your heart is God gently saying, I see you my child. I'm here and I'm guiding you. Another way God gets our attention is through the quiet nudging of the Holy Spirit. John 16 verse 13 says, But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth, the Holy Spirit convicts us when we stray from God's path. This conviction isn't condemnation, it's a loving reminder. For instance, you might feel uneasy after saying something harsh or making a decision that doesn't align with your faith. That feeling isn't guilt for guilt's sake, it's God urging you to reflect and repent. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is one of the most profound ways God communicates with us because it operates in the quietest moments of our lives. When you feel an unexplainable urge to apologize, to pray, or to step away from a harmful situation, it's not your mind playing tricks on you, it's the Holy Spirit prompting you toward righteousness. This divine presence acts like a compass, always pointing us toward God's will. Take for example, those moments when you've spoken out of anger or acted impulsively. The immediate sense of discomfort or regret you feel is the Holy Spirit's way of urging you to course correct. This isn't about making you feel unworthy, rather it's about helping you grow. The Holy Spirit's conviction encourages us to confront our mistakes with humility and seek God's forgiveness. Are you feeling distant from God? Pay attention to the subtle prompts in your heart. Maybe it's a longing to pray, a desire to read the Bible, or an urge to reconcile with someone. These whispers of the Holy Spirit are God's way of drawing you closer. Sometimes, it's as simple as a persistent thought that won't go away, a gentle reminder that there's something in your life that needs attention. One of the most beautiful aspects of the Holy Spirit's conviction is how it aligns with Scripture. The Spirit never leads us in a way that contradicts God's Word. For example, if you're feeling prompted to forgive someone, you can find confirmation in Ephesians 4 verse 32, which says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. The Holy Spirit takes the truths of the Bible and applies them to your specific circumstances, making God's Word come alive in your daily life. The conviction of the Holy Spirit also teaches us to discern between right and wrong in a world filled with moral ambiguity. In a society that often blurs the lines between good and evil, the Spirit's guidance acts as a beacon of truth. It helps us navigate challenges, resist temptations, and make decisions that honor God. This guidance isn't limited to major life choices. It extends to the small, everyday decisions that shape our character and faith. Have you ever felt a sudden urge to pray for someone even if you don't know why? Or perhaps you've been compelled to reach out to a friend who's been on your mind. These are not random occurrences. The Holy Spirit often uses these moments to accomplish God's purposes, both in your life and in the lives of others. By responding to these nudges, you become an instrument of God's love and grace. Conviction is also a pathway to deeper intimacy with God. 
When we respond to the Holy Spirit's promptings, we demonstrate our willingness to submit to God's will. This act of obedience strengthens our relationship with Him and opens our hearts to receive more of His wisdom and blessings. It's a cycle of growth. The more we listen to the Spirit, the more attuned we become to His voice, and the easier it becomes to follow His lead. However, it's important to distinguish between conviction and condemnation. While conviction draws us closer to God, condemnation pushes us away. Romans 8 verse 1 reassures us, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit's conviction is always wrapped in love, offering hope and a path to restoration. It's a reminder that God's grace is sufficient and that His mercies are new every morning. The Holy Spirit also uses conviction to prepare us for greater things. By addressing the areas where we fall short, God equips us to handle the blessings and responsibilities He has in store for us. Think of it as a refining process, much like gold being purified in fire. The discomfort of conviction is temporary, but the transformation it brings is eternal. If you're struggling to hear the Holy Spirit's voice, take a moment to quiet your mind and seek God in prayer. Ask Him to reveal any areas in your life that need correction and to give you the strength to respond in obedience. Remember the Holy Spirit is always speaking, we just need to tune our hearts to listen. The gentle conviction of the Holy Spirit is a gift, not a burden. It's a testament to God's love and His desire for us to live in alignment with His will. So, the next time you feel that nudge in your heart, don't ignore it. Embrace it as an opportunity to grow, to change, and to draw closer to your Creator. God's Spirit is always at work, shaping you into the person He created you to be. Sometimes, God gets our attention by closing doors we desperately want open. Have you ever faced rejection, a failed plan, or a missed opportunity? While it's natural to feel discouraged, these moments often carry a divine purpose. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 reminds us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. The concept of closed doors is not foreign to anyone who has ever pursued a dream, a goal, or a relationship. When a door closes in our lives, it often feels like a setback, but in the divine scheme of things, it could be God's way of redirecting us toward something far greater. Closed doors are not the end, they are often the beginning of a new chapter in God's divine plan for our lives. 1. Protection from unseen dangers God's wisdom far exceeds our own. He sees the dangers and pitfalls that we are blind to. When He closes a door, it could be to shield us from harm that lies ahead. Imagine walking down a path, unaware of a steep cliff or a dangerous predator. Wouldn't a loving father stop you before you proceed? Closed doors can act as divine barriers, keeping us safe from unseen perils. For instance, you might have applied for a job and faced rejection, only to later discover that the company was unstable or unethical. Or perhaps you pursued a relationship that didn't work out, only to realize later that the person wasn't aligned with God's purpose for your life. In these moments, what initially feels like disappointment is, in fact, God's protection. 2. Preparation for something greater Closed doors are not just about what God is keeping us from but also about what He is preparing us for. Sometimes, we are not ready for the blessings or responsibilities that lie ahead. God uses closed doors as a means to refine us, to build our character, and to equip us for the next season of our lives. Consider Joseph in the Bible. He faced numerous closed doors, betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery and imprisoned unjustly. Yet each closed door was a step in God's greater plan to elevate him to a position of influence in Egypt. If Joseph had not endured those challenges, he would not have been prepared to handle the immense responsibility of saving an entire nation during a famine. 3. Redirection toward God's plan When we stubbornly cling to our own plans, God may close doors to redirect us toward His divine purpose. It's easy to become fixated on what we want, but Proverbs 19 verse 21 reminds us. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. A closed door can be a gentle nudge, or sometimes a firm push, toward a path that aligns with God's will. For example, you might have pursued a career in one field, only to find that every opportunity seemed to slip through your fingers. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, another path opens up, one that not only fulfills you but also allows you to serve God's kingdom in ways you never imagined. 4. A call to trust in God's timing Closed doors teach us patience and trust. They remind us that God's timing is perfect, even when it doesn't align with our own. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 says, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. When a door closes, it's an invitation to lean into God's timing and surrender our need for control. It's a test of faith, 
Do we trust that God knows what's best for us, even when we don't understand His reasons? 5. An opportunity for reflection and growth closed doors compel us to pause and reflect. They force us to examine our motives, our priorities, and our relationship with God. Are we seeking His will, or are we pursuing our own desires? Are we relying on our strength, or are we trusting in His guidance? Reflection often leads to growth. It's in the waiting and the wondering that we draw closer to God, seeking His wisdom and direction. As we grow in faith, we become more attuned to His voice and more willing to follow where He leads. 6. Gratitude for God's sovereignty One of the most profound lessons of closed doors is learning to thank God for them. It takes spiritual maturity to look back on a closed door and say, Thank you Lord for saving me from what I thought I wanted. When we embrace God's sovereignty, we begin to see closed doors not as disappointments but as blessings in disguise. The next time you encounter a closed door, resist the urge to despair. Instead, ask God, what are you teaching me in this season? Trust that He is guiding you, protecting you, and preparing you for something far greater than you could imagine. Closed doors are not the end of the story, they are stepping stones toward God's greater purpose for your life. Unexplained Peace and Chaos Another unmistakable sign that God is speaking to you is the peace that surpasses understanding. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace is a profound assurance that transcends circumstances. Have you ever found yourself in the midst of a storm, whether it be emotional, spiritual, or physical, and yet felt an unshakable calmness? This is the peace of God, an anchor for your soul. The peace God offers is not the kind the world promises. It isn't found in material possessions, financial security, or human relationships. Instead, it is rooted in the unchanging nature of God Himself. This peace comes from knowing that God is sovereign and that His plans for you are good. One of the most remarkable aspects of God's peace is how it manifests during trials. For instance, imagine being surrounded by chaos, where everything seems to be falling apart, and yet your heart remains steady. This peace doesn't mean the absence of trouble but the presence of God's assurance that He is in control. The Apostle Paul, who endured countless hardships, understood this peace well. In Philippians 4 verses 6-7 he writes, Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul's words remind us that peace is a byproduct of prayer. When we lay our burdens at God's feet and thank Him in advance for His faithfulness, we invite His peace to guard our hearts and minds. This guarding is not passive, it is an active protection against fear, doubt, and anxiety. Peace also serves as a sign of God's presence. When you're walking in alignment with His will, you'll often experience a deep sense of tranquility, even when the path ahead is uncertain. This peace acts as a compass, guiding you toward decisions that honor God and bring glory to His name. Moreover, God's peace is a testimony to others. When those around you witness your calmness in the face of adversity, it becomes an opportunity to share your faith. People will ask, how can you remain so composed? And your answer can point them to the source of all peace, Jesus Christ. If you're struggling to find peace, take a moment to reflect on God's promises. Meditate on scriptures like Isaiah 26 verse 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you, and John 14 verse 27 where Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. These verses remind us that peace is both a gift and a promise. It is available to all who trust in God and surrender their worries to Him. Finally, remember that peace is cultivated through a relationship with God. Spend time in prayer, immerse yourself in His Word, and surround yourself with a community of believers who encourage and uplift you. As you draw closer to God, His peace will fill your heart and overflow into every aspect of your life. Dreams and Visions Throughout the Bible, God has used dreams and visions to communicate with His people. From Joseph in Genesis to Peter in Acts, God's messages through dreams are profound and life-changing. Joel 2 verse 28 promises, And afterward I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions, Dreams and visions are not random occurrences. They are often a deliberate way God chooses to reveal His plans or offer guidance. In the Bible, Joseph's dreams foretold his rise to power and the preservation of his family during famine. Similarly, 
Peter's vision of a sheet filled with unclean animals in Acts 10 symbolized God's call to include Gentiles in the message of salvation. These divine experiences often carry profound messages, but they require discernment. If you've been experiencing vivid dreams that align with God's word or receiving clear spiritual revelations, it's essential to approach them with prayer and seek understanding. God's messages and dreams often reflect His word, confirming His will for your life. When God speaks through dreams He can 1. Provide direction. God uses dreams to illuminate our paths. For example, in Matthew 1 verses 20 to 21, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, instructing him to take Mary as his wife because her child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. This dream provided clarity and courage for Joseph to obey God's will. 2. Offer warnings. Dreams can serve as warnings to protect us from harm. In Matthew 2 verse 13, an angel warned Joseph in a dream to flee to Egypt to save baby Jesus from King Herod's wrath. These warnings require immediate obedience and trust in God's plan. 3. Reveal prophecies. God may use dreams to reveal his plans for the future. In Genesis 37, Joseph's dreams depicted his future role as a leader. Though initially misunderstood, these dreams eventually came to fruition, demonstrating God's sovereignty. 4. Strengthen faith. Dreams can reaffirm God's promises and strengthen our faith. For instance, in Genesis 28, Jacob's dream of a ladder reaching heaven reminded him of God's covenant and presence in his life. How to respond to dreams and visions. 1. Pray for clarity. Ask God for wisdom to interpret your dreams. James 1 verse 5 promises, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. 2. Seek confirmation in Scripture. God's messages will never contradict His Word. Use the Bible as a guide to discern the authenticity of your dreams. 3. Consult godly counsel. Share your dreams with spiritually mature believers who can offer insights and guidance. 4. Act in obedience. If a dream calls you to action, respond with faith and obedience. Trust that God will guide your steps. Dreams and visions are a profound way God communicates with His people. By seeking Him earnestly, you can gain clarity and align your life with His divine purpose. Have you ever noticed the same verse, sermon, or message coming to you repeatedly? This is one of the most common ways God tries to get our attention. For instance, you might hear a particular scripture during church, read it in your devotionals, and then see it shared on social media. When this happens, stop and pay attention. God is highlighting something specific for you to reflect on. God often uses others to speak to us. It could be a friend's timely advice, a stranger's kind words, or a pastor's sermon that resonates deeply. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. If someone's words touch your heart or confirm something you've been praying about, consider that God may be working through them to guide you. Difficult seasons can be powerful tools for God to get our attention. James 1 verses 2 to 4 encourages us. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Trials refine us, drawing us closer to God and teaching us dependence on Him. Instead of viewing challenges as setbacks, see them as setups for a deeper relationship with God. Psalm 19 verse 1 declares, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands. God's creation often reflects His presence and power. A breathtaking sunset, the gentle rustle of leaves, or the majesty of a mountain range can all be reminders of His greatness. Take moments to pause and observe how nature points back to its Creator. Dear brothers and sisters, God is always speaking. The question is, are we listening? God, in His infinite wisdom and love, never ceases to communicate with His children. He longs for an intimate and personal relationship with us, not a distant or impersonal bond. However, the greatest challenge does not lie in the fact that God speaks, but in our willingness and ability to listen. Often, amid the noise of modern life, constant distractions, daily responsibilities and even our own worries, we fail to notice the gentle and calm voice of God calling us. God speaks in many ways. One of the clearest and most powerful forms of His communication is through His Word, the Bible. Every verse, every promise and every command reflects God's heart toward us. When we read the scriptures attentively, we not only find advice and guidance but also experience God's personal touch in our lives. It's as if He were sitting beside us, guiding us, and revealing His perfect plan. Moreover, the Holy Spirit plays a vital role in this divine communication. He is our counselor, comforter, and guide. Many times, 
God uses the gentle nudging of the Spirit to alert, encourage or redirect us. These inner whispers are precious, and to hear them, we need to be spiritually in tune, which is only possible through prayer and a constant pursuit of God's presence. God also speaks through life circumstances. How often do we face challenges or receive unexpected blessings and only later realize they were part of a greater plan? Every door that opens, every difficulty we face, and every encounter that seems like a coincidence can be God's way of showing us something or leading us toward His purpose. Lastly, God uses the people around us to speak to us. He may place someone in our lives to offer wise counsel, give us a word of encouragement, or even confront us with the truth. Sometimes, it's through a sermon, a conversation with a friend, or a stranger who says exactly what we needed to hear that we perceive God's hand at work. The importance of not ignoring the signs. Often we ignore the signs God places before us, whether out of inattention, fear of change, or simply because we are too focused on our own plans. However, ignoring these signs can lead us to miss blessings, opportunities, and even the direction God desires for our lives. It is essential to pause, reflect, and discern what He is trying to tell us. Take time to reflect, pray, and respond to God's call. Hearing God requires intentionality. This means creating moments of silence in our routine to connect with Him, immersing ourselves in His Word, listening to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and seeking answers in prayer. But listening is not enough. Action is also necessary. When we understand what God is telling us, we must respond with faith and obedience. This active response is what solidifies our relationship with Him and allows us to live in alignment with His will. God is not a distant spectator in our lives. He is the loving Father who constantly calls us, desires to speak with us and guide us. The question remains, are you listening? If not, now is the time to adjust your spiritual frequency, open your heart, and allow God's voice to transform your life. If this message has touched your heart, please subscribe to Sacred Revelations, leave a like and share this video with your loved ones. Let's continue to grow together in faith and spread God's word far and wide. Remember, God loves you and He's always working for your good. Until next time, stay blessed and keep seeking His presence.